who I am and who I work for. Uh, I am the vice president of cloud development and an instructor at WinElect. Uh, we've been an award-winning Microsoft partner for many years. You might know us from Windows and .NET. We're also able to help with uh, cloud and DevOps and data and AI. We do consulting, we do training, and we have an on-demand offering. I myself am an Azure MVP, a Microsoft certified trainer. I've been pretty heavily involved in Azure since, well, probably for, I think about eight years or so now. But let's dive right into this here. So, as organizations embrace this DevOps culture thing, there, there's a common cycle to be adopted in order to achieve this goal of providing continuous delivery of value to the end users. So, you know, we've seen this cycle in other methodologies as well. It usually starts with, you know, planning, setting up objectives, tracking progress against those objectives. Then it drives into development and testing, uh, ideally, you know, culminating with some kind of a continuous integration process. That'll feed into some kind of frequent repeatable release cycle driven by continuous deployment. And now what? How do you decide what is the next most important thing to work on? How do you move that loop along from release to the next plan and track cycle? Are you waiting for the loudest voice in the room? Uh, maybe who's got the best or the funniest or the most painful customer anecdote? You know, what, what is driving that decision as to what is next? And ideally, you wanna move away from making these decisions based on some kind of subjective data, you know, the loudest voice in the room type of thing. And you really wanna to get to something objective, something that, that you know, really has, uh, is, is rooted in the facts of what's going on with your application. And that means you have to monitor and understand what is really going on with your application. So why is monitoring so important? And if you can indulge me a minute of, of cynicism, uh, you know, the reality is it's difficult to depend on customers or your coworkers to really tell you what's actually happening with your application and what's not happening with your applications and what's going wrong or right. What, why is it difficult? Well, we've all dealt with this. People who have bad experiences sometimes will relay those to you in a disproportionate way. They'll absolutely yell bloody murder about small problems, and maybe they'll tell you something small or subtle about a really big problem. Or, even more damning, sometimes when they have a problem, they'll just leave your site and won't come back and won't tell you anything about it. Another problem is sometimes our end users, they're not technical like us. So the way they relay the information to you doesn't really give you something too actionable. You know, I was trying to do this thing and, and it's busted. Well, wh what do I do about that? I don't quite know what I can do with that. Uh, likewise, as far as people reporting problems, when things go right, they don't always tell you that they're going right. You went out, you bought a service, you bought a product. You don't always go out and say, yep, this thing did exactly what it was supposed to for exactly what I paid for. You, you, you'll tend to report problems, but maybe not report successes. And then when you're relaying, uh, relaying relying on your uh, you know, coworkers, your colleagues to give you signals about what's going on in the outside world, well, they have personalities themselves. They, they may dramatize events. They have friends. Hey, my buddy had a problem. It's really important that you fix it for him. Is that really what's crucial for my business? Uh, or they may have compensation plans. They may have vested interest in one part or one application working better than another uh, because that is their area of focus. That is what they're passionate about. That is what they're invested in. So the signals we get from you know, customers or colleagues can tend to get a little bit, uh, they'll have some bias in the signal sometimes. What do we do about it? Well, we need to use telemetry. We need to use metrics about what's really going on with our application to help us describe what the users did do, also what they did not do, and what succeeded and what failed. And that brings us to the topic of monitoring in Microsoft Azure which is going to be the baseline of our conversation today. Azure provides several different tools under the umbrella of the Azure Monitor service. And these tools leverage data ingest, storage, and aggregation technologies 
that are built for managing system logging and metric information. Now, there is a distinction being made between logging and metrics. Logging will be information about an event. It'll be pretty detailed. This happened, and here's everything that happened with it, whereas metrics will be uh, uh, aggregated information. The CPU was at 75% for some period of time. You don't want to record the CPU uh, level at every microsecond because that amount of information is just overkill. Uh, it's going to be hard to slog through. You'll tend to get that in some kind of a, an aggregated uh, format. So, and it tend to be numeric. Uh, so the Azure Monitor Service, it's intended to be kind of a one-stop shop for information about resources, sorry, about applications hosted in Azure or actually elsewhere. Uh, the information can come from places in the uh, hierarchy of, of Azure things. So it can include the Azure Active Directory tenant, up through the uh, subscriptions that you have where you're, that are housing your resources. Information going in there can come from the resources in those subscriptions. Uh, if those resources are like virtual machines or uh, 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 containers, maybe operating systems in those resources can surface information. Uh, and ultimately, applications themselves can relay some information back out as well. And beyond Azure resources, Azure Monitor can, uh, information can also come from other sources. So what we're going to focus on today is data emitted by applications and gathered through Azure Application Insights and how we can use some of those different tools in Azure to get this data and use it to help us understand how our application is behaving or, well, misbehaving. So what specifically is Azure Application Insights? Application Insights is an application performance monitoring or APM service. It provides tools and SDKs that you can use to gather information about your application's behavior. It aggregates this data and prevent, presents it in ways that help you understand what the app is and is not doing. And it'll integrate with other tools both in and out of Azure in order to surface this information for you in meaningful ways and frankly, hopefully actionable ways. And a little bit of an important note, although Application Insights is a service in Azure and there is not an on-premises version of the monitoring data store or an offline version of Application Insights, it can be used to aggregate data from applications hosted on-premises or, or elsewhere. And I'll talk a little bit about this uh, in a little more depth later. So I found the best way to introduce Azure Application Insights is to actually show it in action. Um, so let's have a bit of a look. We're going to start with our demo application here. And let me bring up the browser here. And so we're going to go to uh, our demo applications at appinsightsdemo.shinysiteup.org. And this is our Shiny Site Up motorcycle parts store. It's currently running as an ASP.NET Core site, it's hosted in Azure App Services. And it's using Azure Table Storage to hold our parts catalog and our shopping cart data. It's using Azure Blob Storage to hold our catalog images. And it's using an Azure SQL database to support ASP.NET uh, authentication. Feel free, by the way, to look at it yourselves. In fact, this whole thing works better if we have people touching it from a few different places. The app is pretty simple. It's also fairly broken in a couple of places. So, for example, let's actually look at our parts that we've got listed here. And it's where we happen to have, be having our exhaust system sale. So, yep, sure enough. Okay, that's interesting. And, you know, I, I, I really like this exhaust. I'd like to buy it. I'm going to add it to my cart. And, oops, that didn't work. Uh, let's try a different one. Uh, let's try this one over here and add to the cart. And, yeah, no, that's not working either. Okay. We have a bit of a problem to deal with here. Let's try one more just to be sure. No. Okay. So there's something wrong here when I'm going to add things to the cart. Uh, I'm not quite sure what it might be. Well, maybe if I log in, uh, so sign in here. Great. I'm able to sign in. I can see that I've got items in my cart. Uh, yeah, but I don't need both of these. I'm going to take one of them out. Oh, nope, we're broken there too. And come on up here. No, broken there. One more time for good measure. Still broken. Okay, so we've got some problems we need to fix on this site. 
And remember, some of your users, when they experience these kinds of things on your sites, they'll report these problems. Most won't, and many are just going to leave and they aren't going to come back. So let's introduce Application Insights by starting to, to use it as our, our, our line of defense for dealing with these things. So coming on over here to the Azure portal, in Azure application, sorry, in Azure, you can add application insights to uh, monitor applications without actually modifying your source code. And this is known as codeless or runtime monitoring. And this is useful to do for things like application services in Azure because it's low impact and it actually can tie application insights data into the built-in troubleshoot tooling that's available inside of Azure itself. Uh, you can use this kind of codeless monitoring for a few key platforms. In app services, you can use it for .NET and .NET Core applications. It's in preview for Node.js applications, and you can enable it just from the service configuration. We'll see this in a second. For VMs and on-premises uh, .NET full framework applications running in IIS, you can install an Application Insights agent. Uh, it used to be called the Performance uh, Monitor, I believe. but Installing that will enable that uh, you to collect data without actually modifying your code. For Kubernetes uh, or standalone Java applications, you can install a standalone Java agent that's currently in preview, and that can pick up things without modifying code. And for the old classic Azure Cloud Services, you can actually route the diagnostic data that it collects towards application insights. Coming back to our portal here, I've got a just an absolutely empty web application here. This is you know, as it comes right out of the box. Uh, it's you know, no code that I've uploaded, but I want to use it to show adding application insights. If I come to my configuration, I've got nothing going on here. I can come on down here to application insights and I can turn on application insights. And at this point, I can either create a new application insights resource and select the region that it will be deployed into, remembering that data that leaves a region in Azure ends up being billed to you. So be careful about that. Try to co-locate your application insights uh, instances with the services that would be putting data into it so you don't have to deal with that data egress charge. I'm going to use a pre-existing instance here. Make sure I select that. And down here, there's some settings that I can throw ahead of time. I'm just going to use the default settings for uh, this, and I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. And this will go ahead and wire up my, uh, uh, my, my web application to emit data to Application Insights. I can see here that my application configuration has been modified, including this uh, application key value the, app, the instrumentation key value is what's used by Application Insights. Uh, you, when you send data to App Insights, you provide this value, it's sent in a header, and it actually indicates uh, where, you know, which instance of App Insights the data should go to. If I come on back to the Application Insights area, I can see it's enabled. I can select my Application Insights uh, instance. I've got my instrumentation key that I need to be using. It's displayed right here. If I bring up, we'll go into what some of these are here in more detail, but just to prove that it's working, oh, I need to refresh this a couple times. Just kind of prime the page up a little bit. Refresh a few times now. If I there we go. And it'll start to collect live data. This will be a subset of all of the data that, app, uh, that application insights can send. But you'll see here if I refresh the page a couple more times. I'm starting to get live data about uh, my, my various requests. There it is, the request has come in. I can see that the uh, memory of my uh, uh, application, what, what how, sorry, how much memory it's consuming, what the CPU is doing, just a quick at a glance view of my application in real time. Okay, I've actually done this already for our demo application here. So if I come back to my dashboard and I come in here, you'll see Application Insights is already wired up for this application. And it's using this particular instance. So great. Uh, this will, you know, again, we were automatically collecting uh, some telemetry uh, and we didn't have to modify our code at all. Another option available to you 
is to use code-based integration, basically integrating application insights telemetry gathering into your application's code base. This gives you a few interesting benefits. You can customize the uh, what, what information is gathered. You can add client-side telemetry gathering. So if you have a web application, you're not just gathering information from the server, you can actually gather information from the page as it's running in your client's browsers. You can emit your own custom telemetry information. You can extend the reach of the kind of telemetry being gathered. So it's not just uh, what your application is doing. You can actually get some deep behavioral information about the application. I'll show this in just a second. Um, you can enhance your Visual Studio debugging experience. So Visual Studio can tie into some of the application insights information, even if it isn't connected to the one in the cloud. But you can also integrate the telemetry that's gathered in Azure itself and have that come back into Visual Studio to enhance the Visual Studio experience. Application Insights SDKs are provided for several platforms. Uh, that includes, as you'd expect, .NET and .NET Core. Uh, so the SDK is available for Java, JavaScript, and Node. For Python, there are a set of extensions available for Open Census. I guess this is moving to what's called Open Telemetry. Um, so, so, you know, the, the Python uh, data can, can be emitted that way. For Android and iOS, there's a bit of a special exception, a little bit of an asterisk here, in that uh, there are SDKs for working with App Center, uh, the App Center service, and the App Center service can be configured to then continuously export its data to an Application Insights instance. Uh, and Xamarin, you would take a Xamarin application and run that into App Center and then uh, run the data out that way as well. Let's actually wire up our application in Visual Studio. So here I have Visual Studio with the, the, um, the, the shiny side up uh, websites project. To add this, uh, to add application insights, like a lot of things Visual Studio, there's a couple of different ways you can go about it. Uh, generally, you, know, you can select add connected service. I can also right click and say configure application insights. We'll go ahead and click that one. I'm going to select Azure Application Insights as opposed to local. The local version just uh, brings in the SDK, but doesn't do any attachment to any kind of remote service. It's a subset of the second one here. Uh, select that one. It's going to go out and find information about my Azure subscription. I'm going to select the instance of Application Insights that I want to connect to here. And then here it's going to say, okay, what key name do you want to use what, you know, for, for your setting? but also the key value. It actually will reach into Azure and get that key value for me. However, I'm gonna select none here. And why am I doing that? I tend to prefer not to include the instrumentation uh, uh, hookup into Azure in my developer setup. I'll allow that to happen by picking up the setting once it gets up into Azure in the cloud. As developers, we do really horrible things to our applications on our desktop and including the telemetry that our application is generating and sending that up into our application in an environment can pollute that environment with the information about what's going on on our desktop. We run breakpoints that make page loads take forever, we'll force exceptions, we'll do bad things, and it can clutter up uh, a, a, a telemetry uh, system if you do it that way. So I'll tend to select none here. This doesn't mean that I now don't have application insights helping me on my desktop, it just means that it's not going to Azure. And I'll show you how we get this uh, information here on our desktop here in a second. Select next, I'll go ahead. Yes, I want my code, I want the NuGet packages, I want the project modified and, and so on and so forth. This is gonna go ahead and pull down the necessary NuGet packages for me. And it'll configure my application. Let's take a look at what it did. I actually am running this application um, or have this application set up with a, a Git repository so I can actually see the changes that were made here. Uh, if I look at the project file itself, I can see sure enough, a NuGet package was, was added, the application insights. And this special property, application insights resource ID has been added. That is an interesting one. What that does is it actually will hook up into the Application Insights instance. But I told you, don't put the key in there. No, what this is doing is it will reach into an Application Insights instance. And if you're running a version of Visual Studio that supports CodeLens, 
it will actually light up information from the App Insights instance down to the code sections that you're working through through the little code lens annotations in Visual Studio. So it'll enhance your experience. You can actually see this method is creating a lot of problems out in, in production or out in my demo environment. I can go ahead and make some, some you know, see what's going on and dig into it there. Uh, in addition to the NuGet package, it's going to go ahead and make changes to my startup code, and it'll add this Application Insights telemetry line here. Let's go ahead and open that up directly. Because I'm going to actually make a slight modification to it uh, and to what it's done for us for free. Copy some code here and paste that on down and replace this one. So instead of just providing the um, configuration information, resolve this. I can also, you know, I can provide the key. If it's not there, it's not going to complain. But there are a bunch of other configuration settings that you can throw while you're here. And this speaks to the idea of, okay, I've added this, and I've added the instrumentation. Now I can get more control over the process. A whole bunch of different settings that I can go ahead and modify. What kind of telemetry am I gathering? And I can enable and disable um, this telemetry. I'm also going to throw the developer mode flag here while I'm developing. Don't put developer mode in there while you're in production. What developer mode does, or more importantly, what it doesn't do, while Application Insights is running, it'll actually batch up the, the telemetry it's gathering and gradually send it over to the App Insights instance in order to minimize the possible impact that App Insights might have on your application while it's running. Throwing developer mode reduces this optimization a bit and allows the information to flow a little bit faster to the Application Insights instance. It's really handy when you're developing because there, there's less lag in getting your data up to App Insights, but uh, obviously you don't want it in production because it minimizes the, the effort that App Insights is making to not impact your running application. Um, the other thing I want to do here is I'm actually going to go into my project and I'm going to update my NuGet package. There's a new version, a pretty brand new version of the, the package, and it actually introduces a change to uh, the App Insights behavior that I want to be sure to tell you about. So let me update that package version. And grab a little bit of code. Okay, accept. Great, right, it's updated, and I can come back over here to startup. I'm going to add and resolve. Okay, up until version 2.14 of the SDK, and uh, in, in other words, prior to 2.14, uh, and in general, as App Insights is running, it'll actually detect that your application is making calls to external services, and it'll try and gather information about those services. And it'll do it intelligently where it can. It knows about certain things like SQL databases, as an example. Up until version 2.14, it actually would record uh, tele the, the telemetry that it would record about those SQL connections included even the SQL command. In 2.14, they're, they're turning that behavior off by default, so it will not record the SQL command anymore. Kind of a let's be private by default, and then we can go ahead and, and um, and, and allow you to throw a setting if you want to override that and keep the SQL text. So if you want your, your, your telemetry for your dependencies, your SQL dependencies, to track the SQL command that's being issued, you do have to go ahead and add a setting. Application Insights works as a collection of connected modules. In this case, we're going to throw a setting on the dependency tracking telemetry module and that's going to enable us to, to gather this SQL information. There's other settings we can go ahead and throw in here. Uh, you know, runtime, so on and so forth, uh, the kind of headers. But in this case, the one we're interested in is the SQL command instrumentation. Another thing that the um, SDK install used to do for us, but it doesn't do for us anymore, is gathering that client-side JavaScript page telemetry. So I'm going to come on in here to view imports, and I'm going to add a uh, quick little uh, in dependency injection. And I'm going to tell it to bring in this thing called JavaScript snippet as, well, JavaScript snippet. 
And I'm going to go into my layout. Uh, basically, I just want something to be included in the head section of all of my uh, pages as they're rendered. In this case, I want that full script that's being generated by the JavaScript snippet. Being provided by the JavaScript snippet. This is JavaScript that Application Insights SDK provides for us. It'll end up in all of my pages, and this will measure performance uh, behavior for all of my pages as they're running in my end users' browsers. So I can get that uh, view of what's going on with my application. So they used to add this for you automatically. Now we have to go in and add it manually. Let's actually see the application here running in the debugger a little bit. So I'm just going to F5 debug this right now. And here we go. And uh, wait for the application to come on up. And we wait some more. And sure enough, here's my application. And it is just as broken as the one on the, the server is. In fact, I'm just gonna blaze through the exception here. One of the things to note here, I mentioned, well, I'm not sending my information up to the uh, the, the, the back end uh, for App Insights, but App Insights would still help me. If I look down here in my debug window, I don't know if I can font up on that, um, but I've got a line here that says Application Insights Telemetry Unconfigured, and it's got a bunch of JSON. It is actually putting the App Insights Collected Telemetry here into my debug window. But more than that, I've got this little application insights viewer that I can bring up here in Visual Studio, which will give me that application insights presented in a bit of a user interface that I can use to see what's going on. Sure enough, you know, I've got my, my error that, that I saw there. I can see uh, details about it. You know, this is what happened. Okay. You know, I got a 500 response code. I can look up telemetry for this information. The application insights information that otherwise would be surfaced up to, visual, to, to application insights in Azure is actually available for me to consume right here inside of my Visual Studio debugger experience. Okay. So having seen that, again, that's another advantage of actually instrumenting your application to include that SDK. One other NuGet package I want to go ahead and bring in here. Over here, Microsoft. Uh, and this is the snapshot collector NuGet package. I'm going to bring it on in. And I'm going to go ahead and configure it. So over here in startup. One more line of configuration, add snapshot collector. If you're not familiar with it, the snapshot connector, snapshot debugging, it'll fire up when certain exception patterns are recognized and repeated, uh, or you can actually trigger it by connecting up to it uh, directly from Visual Studio. But it will actually pull a point in time state snapshot of your application, uh, including the call stack, the variable stack, and set it aside for you to examine later. It's, you know, if it sees an exception being repeated up to n times and, and so on and so forth. And this will give you really deep information about what's going on inside of your uh, uh, application when there are exceptions or errors. With all of this configured, let's go ahead and publish this version on up into Azure. Publish the application with all the instrumentation there. And again, it's going to look for its configuration from this App Insights instrumentation key. But because we went ahead in Azure and added our application that way, or it's and, and added the instrumentation to our application, that setting is already available inside of our application's configuration. And that's going to point to our instrumentation key. So Visual Studio, it's still working. Unfortunately, I found the publish experience slows down a little bit when the web camera is actually running, or it will downright break. Let's try it one more time. 
Hopefully I don't have to disable the camera here. There we go. Okay. So it's published. It's going to reload the, the page. It is going to reload the page. Okay, come on. Well, let's actually go into Application Insights and see if we're getting telemetry off the application. So bring up the Application Insights instance. Come on over here, live metrics. published in Visual Studio, right? Yeah. Okay, the page is loaded. And sure enough, by the way, feel free to use this from your location as well. If I refresh the page or if I go in and let's log out and sorry, go in and add to cart. And sure enough, if I come in here, I see the, the errors and the exceptions in my live metrics page. Yeah, I think some other people might be hitting this. Excellent. But I can see the requests are coming in. I get a live view of my application. Okay. Sorry, one other thing I forgot to do here. I skipped a step. Shame on me. Uh, so in addition to uh, with the SDK, picking up this information and enhancing our debug experience, I also mentioned you can emit your own telemetry. So let's go back to our controller here, our, our home controller. And I'm going to add uh, into my parameters, my constructor parameters here. I'm just going to do a telemetry. Let's resolve this. And let's go ahead and bring in as a variable. Do a note check just for good measure. So I've got an instance of telemetry client. Adding that application insights uh, reference, configuring that up at the beginning, we'll go ahead and set it up for dependency injection in the SPA.NET uh, uh, core application. Down here in add item to cart, I can go ahead and add some custom telemetry gathering here. Let's clean this up a little bit. Uh, we'll accept it as a little bit messy. But the telemetry client lets me emit a variety of different kinds of telemetry. So I go track, I can see, I can send telemetry information about availability, dependencies, I can send exceptions. Uh, but dependencies, if I've got something that isn't being interpreted automatically by App Insights as a dependency call, I can go ahead and say, you know what, I'm making a dependency call here, and here's what you need to know about it. And I can provide that information. I'm going to actually track an event, which is just, hey, something interesting has happened at this point in time. And I can provide a, a set of uh, uh, name value pairs that will be emitted as the telemetry, excuse me, for that event. Also, by the way, uh, I, I noticed, if you noticed, you may have seen that there's track trace available for you, so you can send trace statements on up. iLogger is automatically integrated into Application Insights. So if I send information um, from iLogger, Application Insights can pick it up and include it in its telemetry. It'll use the typical normal uh, iLogger settings, uh, .NET Core, uh, .NET Core Logger settings, to determine what gets emitted and what not, what doesn't. Uh, come on here into App Settings. I'm just going to use the default settings, but I can also add an Application Insights uh, set of settings in here and, and adjust its uh, a threshold for when things should be emitted. I've got this warning in here, so this should be picked up because my threshold is set to warning. Uh, being as I didn't include that earlier, let's go ahead and publish again. Hopefully this will be a little bit better behaved than last time. Or we'll just have to do it twice. And they have to do it twice. Yep. 
So this is kind of a weird thing. It doesn't normally occur unless I've got my webcam going. I don't know what the bandwidth problem might happen to be. But okay. So we're back up and running. The page is going to load. It's going to take a minute here. In the meantime, let's take a trip around Application Insights and um, see some of the information that we can uh, glean that, that, that's been sent on up for us. So we've already looked at the live metric stream and seen how we can see kind of some of the information about what's going on in real time. That's not the full set of telemetry. In order to go live, it kind of gives you a subset of, of the telemetry that you can view there. There's also this application map. And the application map, zoom out a little bit on this, will give you a view of your application based on what it's detected in terms of who's connected to it and who's making calls to it. So I can see, you know, there, there's, I've got you know, my instance of the application, I can click in on it, I can see, you know, here are the request issues, just kind of an at a glance view of what's going on with my application. It's make so many calls to a database that it's identified that it's calling into, so many calls to Azure Table Storage that it's calling into. These are picked up by virtue of them being dependencies, the duration of the calls, you know, the performance information about those calls. So just a quick at a glance view of what's going on with my application. And I noticed, you know, about 5% of my calls are resulting in errors. I can actually take this application map and pin it. And let me resize this a little bit, make it look nice and pretty. Um, yeah, that'll work. And this I can go ahead and include in my dashboard views inside of my Azure portal. So at a glance, I can kind of look and see, okay, my application behavior, ooh, there may be something there I need to dig in on. In addition to pinning the um, application map, I can also take this failed request chart and pin it on up, maybe number of requests. Come on back here and uh, customize the layout here a little bit. Bring this on up. Size this down a little. And there's another one down here. So I can start to use the application insights information to get a view of what's going on with my application. Sure enough, if something seems amiss, I seem to have a lot of failed requests all of a sudden. I can actually dig in on that. And this is the failures panel inside of Application Insights. And it'll show me a visual view and, and allow me to dig into failures that have been reported by my application, either on operations, failures reaching into the dependencies, exceptions that have been raised, or problems with the individual role, which is the, uh, the instance, the machine instance that, that, that the, is being run on. Sure enough, okay, well, I can see I've got some errors. My errors seem to be correlated to the number of requests. My requests go up, my errors go up, okay. And there's a problem adding items to the cart. I can zoom in on it. I can also click on the individual operations, the individual errors, and get more information about them. Okay, I've got these operations. Let me click on this operation, and this will give me a Gantt view of what's going on with that particular request. The request to home add item to cart came in and resulted in a 500. Here's all my telemetry for that, the URL that was come from. I can actually expand that out. I can see that the request came from Frederikstad in Norway. So somebody in, in Norway had a problem. It just, it'll do a, an IP address lookup and it won't store the IP address unless I tell it to, but it will store the, the sourcing information. I can see the call stack. Um, I can see that a, sorry, before I go into the call stack, that a uh, dependency call was made. I called into table storage, okay. But then I got an exception. And I can see the call stack that was actually captured for that exception. If this is too much information, I can actually thin the call stack down to just my code and get rid of some of the, the external code. You can see the problem occurred in cart context on line 53. Let's see if that tells me anything. Visual Studio, cart context, line 53. I'm not sure. Uh, I, uh, let, let's actually go a little bit further and see if we can find out some more information. I can actually come on down here and I can see other related items. For example, all telemetry for this user session. I can actually find out what did this user do? They reported to me a problem, but they just said, I, I, I did the thing and it didn't work. Well, okay. I can actually come on down here and see, well, in this user session, in this session initiated by the browser, they started with a page view. They made a request. I can actually see their progression through my application 
and the steps that led up to that particular exception. So I can get that information about what was going on. Still, maybe I need some more information. And I'll see this actual exception generated a debug snapshot. I'm gonna open that snapshot. I'll take just a second here. And this will give me not only the call stack that I already had, but it actually gives me the stack information about what was going on when that call was made. So I can see, you know, when, when I was in the uh, controller, uh, this is the values that came in through the controller. My call to add item to cart, okay, well, it's a null ref exception. User is null and cart entry is null. If I go back to my code, oh, a null user would be a problem. So being able to actually see the stack at the time that the exception happened is tremendously helpful to actually go in and figure out, you know, it, it, it means that I don't have to try and, and, and make sure and, and reproduce that error locally in order to figure out what was going on. I can actually use that user's experience to inform me about what happened. Another thing I can do here is if I come back to my error page, I can see, well, use the default behavior in ASP.NET Core, uh, which will put the current activity information out as a request ID. I can take that activity information and I can come on back here to my application insights instance and I can go to search. So the search panel lets me, name implies, search across a period of time for information. I can take that request ID search for it. So my user calls, it's broken. Okay, well, on the error page, do you have a request ID? Yes. Can you give me that? Can you email it to me? Can you put it in a chat for me? Yeah, okay. Well, I can now go search for that request ID, which Application Insights will surface up as an operation ID. And I, oh, okay, here's what happened, and here's the exception. And I can actually use that to chase down what the user's problem was. Or again, if the user isn't providing it for me, my support team can gather it for me and put it into a, a, a defect ticket, and I can pick that up, and then I can go back and search my telemetry for that. Okay. So in addition to search, we've talked about the live metrics. We've talked about search. Another in, 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 crucial feature, you, you, you have to use this because the, the, the general price for this is somewhere between free and gratis. Uh, I can go ahead and add an availability test. So I'll go ahead and give this a name and I'll call it demo availability. I'm going to select a URL ping test. The URL tests are free. The, the other option here, multi-step web tests cost money. The multi-step web tests allow you to provide steps to that, that should be followed. The ping test just says, call this URL. Let me pull my URL from my application here. And I'm going to send it to my home page, but likewise, if you happen to have a health check page, that's a great place to target these two. Dependent request basically says, okay, well, if I'm just calling an API, no big deal, I'm not going to use that. But if I'm calling a web page, it might load other things like images and script files. I can tell it to go ahead and load those as well. I'm going to leave that blank for now. Retries, try more than once um, before reporting that there's an issue. Test every five minutes, that sounds good. I can select test locations. This application is housed in the US. Uh, this app Insights, Insights Instance is housed in the US. It's gonna recommend US-based um, uh, data centers to test from, but I can select others as well. Uh, and again, for your application, select the ones that make sense. How do I define success? Well, make sure that a result happens inside of 120 seconds. Check for an HTTP response of 200. Okay, I can also try and match content and I can specify some content that my response must contain. Either things that I know will be on the home page, if I'm making an API call, the result that the API call should have, or if I have a health check page, things to look for on the health check page, I can include that as well. That's great. Uh, whoops. Uh, and, uh, and then alerts, I can have it actually enable alerting. I'll go ahead and include alerting there. Now I'm fooling this a little bit because this test was already uh, enabled earlier. I just shut it down or deleted it and recreated it with the same name. So I should have some values that I can chase in here from an earlier run. I may need a bit of a refresh. Let's go ahead and refresh the page. See if I can fool it all the way. And yes, sure enough, 
I like the scatter plot view. This will say over the last 24 hours, this is the result of those availability tests actually running. And you can see, well, wow, you know, overnight, something interesting happened. Well, why did that call take close to 30 seconds? And I can actually go back to the Gantt view and look at the details of that particular chart and see what happened. But again, this is just every five minutes, it's gonna make calls from five data centers across the, the, the world. Uh, and I can actually go ahead and I can configure my alerting. And with alerting, I can say, okay, if in this case, when failed locations is greater than two, uh, or equal to two, so if I get three out of five uh, data centers failing, maybe something's wrong with my site and maybe I want to be notified about it. I'll select an action group. I've already configured this. This is set up to email me. Uh, I can email myself. I can actually generate SMS messages or, or other notifications. I can actually go ahead and say, when there's a problem with the site, when the site goes down, tell me about it before I wait for my end users to tell me about it. Um, sorry, I, I do see one question here while I wait for this to, to load. Is the snapshot collector only to be used during development? No, in fact, it's, it very much can be used during production. When it takes the heap, uh, some of the configuration options on it limit how many it'll collect, how often it'll collect it, how many instances of the same exception to be seen for it to be collected. Um, and then it'll go ahead and, and, and generate those. It actually generates those asynchronously to minimize the impact to your application. It absolutely can, can be used for production uh, and, and, and uh, to, to troubleshoot that. One of the nice things about it, uh, without going into too much detail for time, but from Visual Studio, you can actually tap into it and say, generate a snapshot now. And unlike attaching to a running process from Visual Studio, it won't stop the end user's experience. If you attach to, to an app service instance from Visual Studio and put a breakpoint on it, it will actually stop the site in production. Snap points uh, and the snapshot collector won't. It'll allow it to run, it'll generate that, and then you can actually walk through that in, uh, stack in Visual Studio, almost as if you were doing a live debug. Uh, okay, so now I've enabled the alert, and now, again, I don't wait on my end users to notify me that was, there was a problem. I can actually fix the problems before my users see it. Or more importantly, before my boss calls me and tells me the site is down. Okay, so we've looked at, um, sorry, coming on up here a bit. We've looked at availability failures, uh, performance. Let me go into the performance blade really quick. Very similar to the failures, it's actually gonna look and measure the behavior of my application as it's running, and it'll let me know where my performance uh, bottlenecks may happen to be. And I can look at this uh, against you know, just the average uh, performance, the 99th percentile in order to, to eliminate noise. I can see that you know the home contact page appears to be a little slow, and now I can go in and investigate what do I need to fix about that page. Um, okay, so down here also beyond just the telemetry, I can also start to see. Excuse me. I can also start to see uh, if uh, insights, not insights, but um, analytics about how my site happens to be used. So, for instance, I can look at users. Let's take a look at users during the last hour. And okay, I can see I've had you know, a variety of different users. Let's bring up some insights about these users. And this is fantastic to, to deal with the fact that someone in a meeting is gonna shout and say, no, the, all our users are using Firefox. Nobody ever uses Edge, nobody uses Chrome. Well, I can actually come in here and see, yeah, my users came from Norway, the United States and the Faroe Islands. They're running a combination of Windows 10, Android and Mac OS. And these are the browsers that they're connecting to my site using. So when you have that argument about whether or not a browser should, can, can be ignored in testing, you can actually come here and see, okay, here's how the browsers are actually being used in production. Similar to users, I can get that information for sessions. Uh, I can come on down here and look at funnels. Uh, now funnels are interesting in that they allow me to, to measure what is the flow of users through my application. Let's say how many users come to the home page and then go from there to the login page. You can see, okay, out of 13 users that came to my home page, only seven ended up going from there to the login page. And I can actually try and figure out what is the flow of users through my application. 
Another one, the, the, the user flow view here is another, a slightly different take on that. And this is, okay, before and after a particular scenario, let's let this spin up and gather the, the data. What did the users do? What, it's a graphical view of what the users did as they navigated my application. Keep an eye on time here. And I can see this is the pattern of what they did to the application. Retention will show how my users um, actually, uh, yeah, how many users actually come back. Uh, impact, I call this the subtle abet screen. Let's take a look at, based on the duration the home page took to load, how many people actually go to the login page over the last seven days? Does a slow loading home page have a statistical impact on people going to log in? And it says, yeah, no. So this is the subtle bet for me. Uh, does this cause that? Well, no, it doesn't appear to have that particular correlation. So again, kind of handy to go in and dig in on what's going on with your application. Okay, this is nice and good. A lot of this has been prepackaged, but what if what the information I want isn't in one of these prepackaged bits of information? Well, all of this data is being aggregated and accumulated for you. And in fact, any of these requests are based on queries to a log analytics backing store. I can actually go through the UI and I can actually open up the actual query that generated that particular user interface, or that particular bit of information. This is the query that generates the, the, the failures information that we saw. All the information is stored in these various tables. I use what's called the Custo query language that's popular amongst a lot of features inside of Azure to go in and dig in and get information. I have a saved query here. I'll go ahead and open up. And this is a bit of a contrived query, but I'm going to take any request that was made. Excuse me. I'm going to look at the operations that start with get or post. I'm going to ignore synthetic operations. Uh, synthetic operations are, for example, that availability query. It's not a real end user request. It's, it's been synthesized. Um, I'm also going to take my get request to the um, just a, a, an empty URL, and I'm going to rename it to home index to go ahead and rationalize those because you know, they're, they're the, the, of the shortcut that's being made there. Um, and I'm going to count the number of requests and the overall duration of the requests. Like I said, it's a bit of a contrived query. Oops. Sorry, I had a specific item selected and it tried to run just what was under the cursor. But I can see here, okay, great. This many requests to home, this duration. In addition, I can go ahead and render that visually as a chart. And I can even take that and I can pin that on back to my dashboard. Apply that. Okay, and I can open up my dashboard. And I can see that new contrived chart that I made has gone ahead and, and, and been pinned. One thing I talked about, you know, so I, and so I can go ahead and you know, modify the layout of it. And let's drag it down. Let's make it kind of tall and publish it. And this can actually, this dashboard is actually shared with my team. So other members on my team can come in and see this view of the application. One thing I meant to show that I didn't show uh, earlier, I mentioned that JavaScript that gets emitted. So if I come on here to my page and just bring it up, because I want to come on into the header, I can see here's this script here. And sure enough, application insights, this is that JavaScript that is emitted to gather information about what's going on inside of my page and relay the information back up to me. Okay. So let's see, I've covered that. I don't see any questions. And um, last uh, details here. Pricing, by default, Application Insights is free. You get up to five gigabytes of data per billing account per month. So if you have multiple App Insights instances, they do accumulate against each other towards that five gigabyte count. Above that, $2.30 per gigabyte. How many gigabytes does my application generate? It depends on the application. You'll have to test to get a feel for it. All the analytics features we saw were included in, in, in that for free. Data is retained for between 30 and 730 days. It's 90 days by default. You can go ahead and modify that though. However, any data you retain above 90 days is billed at a charge of 10 cents US per gigabyte per month. Uh, continuous export is uh, free, so you can export the data to a storage account if you're inclined to store it that way rather than do the longer retention. 
Those ping web tests are free. The multi-step web tests where you provide the steps that it needs to follow, those will be $10 US per test per month. You can actually modify the uh, effect how much data is being stored. If I come on over here into App Insights, and close this down and slide all the way down here, usage and estimated costs. It'll display an idea of based on your usage, this is what we think your, your fee will be. Uh, I can adjust my data, how my data is sampled, so I can drop some of my data packets if need be, uh, how long it's retained, and I can configure daily caps on the amount of data to be collected in order to work with that uh, costing uh, 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 parameter. Okay, some quick guidance recap based on some of the things that, that we presented. Uh, okay, sorry, there was a question here. Uh, how much of what you have shown will you get without changing the code versus using the SDK? Uh, the only thing that the SDK gave me was the integration into Visual Studio, so I won't see anything in Visual Studio if I don't modify the code. Um, other than I can go ahead and retrieve that, that code lens uh, information because that integration isn't specific to the code having been modified. I do have to modify the project, though, to pick that up. Um, all of the, uh, and, and the custom data, the, the logging information and the custom trace, uh, the, those uh, will go ahead and, and depend on the code. The uh, JavaScript uh, page metering won't get picked up automatically, I don't believe. But beyond that, everything else that we saw today, the, pay, the, the information will get picked up and comes without having to instrument the, the SDK. It's just you can enrich, limit, or control the information a little bit better when you're using the, the SDK. So let's see, the runtime monitoring, right? And, and by the way, uh, again, adding that will, will help the self-serve troubleshooting that, that Azure itself provides. Application insights, omit the local key so you don't pollute the, the, the backend store, add the resource ID to light up code lens, Consider it's up to you whether you want to enable that that SQL tracking, um, enable snapshot debugging to get that that richer information. Um, the snapshot debugging, I believe, you also need the, the, to to instrument the SDK to to, to get that. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure you need to to, to do it that way. Um, Developer mode I mentioned, only use it when you're developing. That, that's one that you don't want to use in a production environment because that way you, your, your telemetry gathering can interfere with your application running. Add the JavaScript information to capture what's going on with the client and set the iLogger configuration. One brand new feature that I didn't demo today, a bit of a, a, a way that the winds are blowing, changes that are happening. Um, Workspace-backed application insights resources. This is currently in preview. Instead of the application insights instance creating its own uh, log analytics data store, you can actually, uh, when you set up these new application insights resources, you can actually tell them a log analytics data store to use. And that way, different services, different applications can route their data all into one common uh, uh, data store. This simplifies queries that you can make when you want to look at the telemetry coming out of storage, coming out of the VM in your system, coming out of your App Insights instance, rather than having to cross workspaces in your queries, you can just go ahead and use the data that's all there and all available. App Insights, when you're coming through its interfaces, it will just look into its little bit of information that's in there, but you can go ahead and, and if you're uh, using log analytics or interested in using log analytics, uh, workspaces to get more holistic view over a larger service, a microservice based service or what have you. All the information is in that one workspace and, and you can go ahead and have a better uh, experience querying and mining that information out. Okay, uh, a bit of a whirlwind tour and we're coming right up to the hour here. Uh, uh, are there any questions? Where can we access the slides? I will go ahead and publish them and, and uh, on SlideShare, and I will uh, put the link uh, here uh, in the chat, uh, sorry, in the Slack uh, chat window, if that works for folks. Well, otherwise, thank you all very, very much, and I hope you uh, continue to enjoy the rest of your NDC Oslo experience, and thank you all for, for being here and for having me.